So the, the government's going to run out of runway on this uh, youth porn issue, and um, we're just waiting here patiently, driving it into them um, as much as we can, that they need some radical change in their policy and something that's got to really change the culture out there amongst the recidivist youth offenders. And um, they are light years away from that at the moment. So um, at some point, the public is going to break and they're going to realise they will be punished at the polls for it. Robbie, we had confirmation that pub owner Kevin Darmody was taken by a crocodile while fishing uh, at Kennedy Bend in the uh, Cape York Peninsula area uh, last weekend. It's the second uh, fatal croc attack in two years and follows a near fatal attack of Cooktown uh, when a snorkeler was lucky to escape after punching a crocodile in the mouth. Croc sightings are up by more than 300% in recent years, uh, and locals say that uh, lakes and rivers, which used to be popular recreational spots, are now no-go zones because of croc infestation. Crocs were almost hunted to extinction in the 1970s, but estimates are that there are about 30,000 of them out there now. The CAP has long called for a common-sense uh, approach to crocodile management, which places the lives of people above those of crocs. However, your call for a croc call this week was met with equivocation by the Premier, who said, and I quote, We know up north it's croc country. If there is anything more that we can do in terms of crocodile management plans, which are worked out with councils, we will do that. However, that there doesn't really seem to be any action uh, taking place or, or planned. So what is the, the CAP plan or CAP proposal for crocodile management? Well, I'll take a few things out of what you just said there, Matt. And like, firstly, um, I think you need to apply a lens of this, that the government just looks, wants a political solution. The KAP wants a practical solution that delivers an outcome. Uh, the only outcome that Parliament, uh, the government in Brisbane is after the, and the Labor government is is a political solution. So they just want to ride the media cycle. So whatever they say, I think it's pretty pointless. Um, but uh, then one of the points you said was a 300% increase. Yeah, a 329% increase from 2011 to 2021 sightings of crops, which is not the most accurate, but it's all we had. And, um, and then the government came along and said, well, let's get our people to do a study. And curiously, they came up and said it's only 3% increase in 10, 10 years. The same. So it's a pretty big difference between the uh, formally recorded sighting from the public in 329 but the one that the government gets their people to do, which curiously is a lot like the surveys they did on youth crime and the numbers they got off police and youth justice for the last five years that said youth crime wasn't a problem. But here we are, our people get eaten. And the next important thing you said was 30,000 crocs. Well, I don't know if 30,000 number, nor do the scientists know if 30,000 is the right number. We don't know what the right number. We don't know what... They were when white man first came. We know that in the territory they're taking over 100,000 eggs a year and uh, culling or destroying crops that come within a 50 kilometre radius of the Dale Harbour so to sort of mitigate um, you know, the, the chance of a uh, crop attack in the harbour where pe- heavily populated areas. And there's no discernible impact on the ecology there at all. And we know that there's no scientific evidence to say what the disruption, there probably is some, but what is the um, level of impact or if any of the ecological disruption of taking them out of the population or reducing them uh, some way. And then uh, finally, you said there that, you know, the government have been, uh, you know, they've equivocated over the, over what their response is. Of course they will. They, I mean, they're watching the politics and the debate has been dominated by conservationists. And I've said it, you know, time and time again, the KAP, you know, we recognise those values of conservation, but there's a limit to where um, their influence should stop and where it starts to subordinate the health and um, the, you know, livelihood of uh, human beings, then you you need to then um, draw, put a line and through those conservation values. So um, our, the KAP position it's quite simple. It's just practical management. Um, it's a, it, it's pretty simple. You know, if there's areas or councils that say they're important our tourism, we don't swim much in these rivers anyway, fine, put up your crop wire signs and encourage them not swimming. We're Lake Placid, you know, a, a short bike ride up the road and people living in Cairns where I swam as a kid um, and a bloke's dog just got taken off the bait walking on there peacefully um, around Christmas time. That's 
where you want to get rid of crocs. And, uh, and, and the government will respond to that saying, well, if you get rid of them, that'll just give people a false sense of security, which is just ridiculous. It's just an absolute nonsense because you can still keep people crock-wise, if you like, what they say, and mitigate the risk at the same time. And that's all we're saying, horses for courses. Gregory River, where I'd love to swim up here in, uh, in the Gulf Country. Uh, there's never been crops up there. They start to come up there now. Get rid of them. Um, that's not every crop, crop in the Gregory system. Just where we go and swim. Um, keep a 50 car radius around there. That's, you know, where's the harm in that? And that's done, been done in territory the last 20, 30 years, and there's no discernible impact anywhere um, of, of any. And, and they're taking 100,000 crocodile eggs in Queens, in Northern Territory as well. We're not allowed to take any. I've been doing a little trial up in, um, in the case that it's illegal for up to the UI to go out and take uh, eggs, as was always done by traditional owners in, to ma- um, you know, maintain the population. So, you know, KAP is saying horses are causing the management plan, which will include culling, you cull pigs, dogs, kangaroos, koalas even in Australia, but you're not allowed to cull as many any crocodiles. And, um, you know, the likes of Australia Zoo and uh, Kerry Irwin seem to dominate the debate. And um, they don't live up here yet. They don't have to swim in these holes and take their kid to Lake Placid for a swim. So it's very easy for them to say, learn to live with it. And, um, and that was... The euphemism, you know, you, what uh, the Premier was using was, look, you know, it is crop country, so just get used to living with them. Well, that's just ridiculous, and that's uh, abrogating yourself for the responsibility of keeping people safe. And finally, I'd say, Matt, um, this, is, this is the hallmark, uh, you know, this is the prime case of where, where govern- the problem is where you govern from 2,000 kilometres away. Well, they don't like us, uh, they just don't care. If it's a risk for us, but it's more a problem for them in Brisbane, so it's not a problem. Robbie, this week, three more lives were lost in a stolen car crash caused by a youth uh, on Sunday night, with reports that the car involved had been on the loose all day and police had been unable to stop it. That makes yet another incident at the hands of a youth who was, in quotes, known to the state. The state government seems to want to wash their hands of responsibility with Deputy Premier Stephen Miles complaining yesterday that people are bringing politics into the tragedy. Robbie, how do you respond to this claim, especially in light of revelations a few weeks ago that the minister responsible for youth justice elbowed her way into a press conference they didn't want her to attend following the death of Emma Lovell just after Christmas? Well, I mean, you you spelt out the hypocrisy there, but I I, I just say that I take great exception whenever I'm accused of, are oh, you just using this to politicise it? Well, when do we get to you raise these issues? Because we've raised youth crime for five years previously in the state cleaning then state parliament, warning them of the growth of and the, the recidivism in their um, in our youth detention centres. So everything was getting worse. All the metrics were there. We kept warning them. They kept coming back and telling us, you, this is a media beater. You guys are um, making this sound like it's a lot worse than it is. Eventually, when it started flooding into the streets of Brisbane and deaths and um, you know, break-ins and those same uh, statistics were becoming apparent to um, the greater public around Queensland, they felt they couldn't hide it anymore. And, uh, and, and yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's easy for... They'll take great advantage of using... Um, running the media cycles that push their agenda on youth crime, or at least what they're not doing on youth crime, and then they turn around and try and be, um, you know, try and make it difficult for us to advocate for change uh, when, when the media comes to us um, after an event like this. And, um, I mean, and similar to the crop level, I don't want to talk. Um, I just, I, I much prefer just we have respect for the someone that's been taken by a crop, but if, uh, if, if that's the opportunity we've got to highlight that issue, um, I'm afraid that's when you've got to do it because uh, that's the only time the government may listen and you might facilitate, facilitate some change. So I take great exception and to any comments like that, like the Deputy Premier's made, and that's just being weak and uh, showing that you, you can't take the criticism. And I think a mature government and, um, and, and a mature politician, I, I should have to take criticism myself, take it on board and deal with it and improve from it. So the, the government's going to run out of runway on this uh, youth porn issue, and um, we're just waiting here patiently, driving it into them um, as much as we can, that they need some radical change in their policy and something that's got really changed the culture out there amongst the recidivist youth offenders. 
and um, they are light years away from that at the moment. So um, at some point, the public is going to break and they're going to realise they will be punished at the polls for it. And um, uh, we just we've got to we've got to uh, put pressure on them in the KAP to bring that date forward. But there will be a reckoning at some point. There will be a point where the government has to say um, because at the moment they say for free location sentencing. Well, there's uh, it just needs to be evidence based. There's no evidence to back it up. Western Australia's doing it right now. So their own load of colleagues in Western Australia think they don't need to say that because apparently they're a bit more bold, uh, mature and um, decisive. Uh, they're doing it and um, it's nothing new to concepts and there's academic rigour behind it and the KAB has been on it for five years will keep on that same policy and down until we get a result from it.